Hey everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a character movement using a simple C -sharp script in the Unity game engine. This tutorial is perfect not only for those who create 3D or 2D platformers, but also games of other genres. We'll start from scratch. I'll also show you how to use Unity's new input system to give your game gamepad support and more. Here, I create a new project in the Unity Hub with 3D URP as a template. We enter the name of the project and click Create button. The Unity editor will open. Let's clean up the template a little bit by removing the README assets. Next, I'll create a new empty scene and open it. In the Package Manager from the Unity registry, we'll install the new input system. Select it from the list and click the Install button. Unity will prompt us to enable support for the new input system. Click Yes. This will restart the editor. Let's add a cube to the scene. It will act as a ground on which our character can move. And here's the character itself. We add a capsule and rename it to player for convenience. Let's raise it slightly above the ground so that it doesn't fall somewhere. In the assets, I'll create a materials folder and two materials. The first is for the player and the second is for the ground. Select the player and in the inspector, add a character controller component to him, needed for movement, and another one, player input, needed to control the character. Let's create actions in the player input component. I'll save them under the name controls. The new input system editor will open. As you can see, there are already several actions here, move, look, and fire. Let's expand the move action. Select the left stick and make a duplicate of it. Change the path from the left stick to the D-pad. Rename the fire action to jump. Select the right trigger and change the path to button south of the gamepad. We also change the path from the left mouse button to space. I think that's a logical choice for jumping. Activate the auto save checkbox to save the changes and close the editor. Now we can start writing some code. In the assets, create a scripts folder and place a new C -sharp script inside it. I named it Player Controller. Drag the script icon onto the player to add it as a component. Double click on it. The code editor will open. In my case, it's Visual Studio. First, we'll write the logic of a simple player movement without jumping. At the top of the script, we'll write the require component attribute. It automatically adds a specified component if it is missing. We'll declare several fields inside the class. Character controller, a reference to the character controller component. Move speed, player movement speed. Move input, this variable stores a value from the input system. Movement, a movement vector. Let's make the move speed field visible in the inspector using the serialize field attribute. This is useful when you want to quickly change values while testing the game without having to edit the code. In the start method, we'll store a reference to the character controller. Import types from the Unity Engine input system namespace with the using directive. Let's start writing the onMove method, which will be used as a callback for the event of the new Unity input system. Declare a parameter of type input value. We'll need to get its value inside the method. Now, let's add the logic of the character's movement. It's very simple. Inside the fixed update method, we store the value of the x property of the input vector and multiply it by the movement speed. Finally, we call the move method of the character controller with the following argument the motion vector multiplied by time fixed delta time. Save the file and press the play button. As you can see, everything works perfectly. Our player can now move left and right using the buttons on the keyboard or gamepad. And although there are many games where the player doesn't jump, in our case he will jump. And how? Open the C-sharp script again. Add fields for the speed and gravity of the jump, as well as the is jumping flag. Serialize the top two fields. Let's write the method on jump, which will be called each time in response to the jump event. We don't need any input values, so we'll leave the parameter list empty. If the character stands on the ground and doesn't jump, then set the is jumping flag to true. Let's expand the fixed update method. If the character is on the ground, then we set his vertical movement down 
at one tenth of the gravity of the jump. This is necessary to ensure that each grounded flag of the character controller component always provides the correct value. Inside this condition, add another one. If the player is jumping, then set the vertical movement value equal to the jump speed. Reset the is jumping flag. However, if the player is not standing on the ground, that is, he's in the air, then we subtract from the current vertical value the gravity of the jump multiplied by 1 if the player is moving up, or 1.25 if the player is falling. Here I'm using the ternary operator. And we are done! Let's save our code and test it in action. As before, we can move left and right, but now, when we press the spacebar over a gamepad button, we jump. Of course, the values can be changed during testing if you select the player and find the component of our script in the inspector window. To make this scene a little bit more interesting, let's add a few objects. It turned out pretty good. Personally, I'm going to use this exact code for my platformer. Subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. Thank you for watching.